Joe Caldwell, or better known as Pogo Joe, or Jumping Joe, is one of 11 children born on November 1st, 1941 in Texas City, Texas. At the age of 15, he moved to Los Angeles with his sister, and once in high school, he started playing basketball as a junior. He was even approached by coach John Wooden to play at UCLA. Ultimately, Joe chose to play at Arizona State University once he graduated. Joe had three very influential sisters who loved Joe very much. And I think they thought that it might be best in Joe's interest to, uh, to leave in Los Angeles. But he set the bar and opened up many doors for African-American young ball players to attend Arizona State. During his time at ASU between 1961 to 1964, Joe led the team to the NCAA tournament in all three of his varsity seasons. He set the university career record with over 1,500 points and had 929 rebounds, making that the second best total in ASU history. The 62-63 team, the greatest team in ASU history, 26-3, beat UCLA by 38 in Western Regionals. Only had to beat Oregon State to go to the Final Four, and we got beat. It was a small school when you think of it at that time. Arizona State had less than 10,000 people. So you ended up knowing a lot of people because half of those were off-campus people. So a lot of people knew Joe. If, if you were in Arizona, you knew who Joe Caldwell was. Well, Joe was a kind of a transformational player. He was one who, uh, who, could, uh, who could elevate uh, like they do now. Uh, and, and that was not really done in those days. Playing for the 1964 U.S. Men's Basketball Olympic team in Tokyo, which Joe himself considers his greatest accomplishment, resulted in a gold medal victory against the Soviet Union. He is one of the few athletes from ASU to make it to the Olympics. I, I know it means a lot to him because every time he pulls out that little bit <laughs> and shows it, that smile goes from side to side want to talk more and more about it and you can tell the joy in his voice when he talks about the Olympics. In the newly formed 1964 NBA draft, Joe was the number two overall pick by the Detroit Pistons. Joe and his grandson Marvin Bagley III, it's playing with the Sacramento Kings, are the first grandfather and grandson to both be drafted number two into the NBA. Nobody else can say that. After a year with the Pistons, he went to the St. Louis Atlanta Hawks, where he would spend the rest of his NBA career. After five years with the Hawks, he would move into the rival of the NBA, the American Basketball Association, and play for the Carolina Cougars in 1970 until 1974, when the team would move to become the St. Louis Spirits. And so he brought, uh, again, credibility to a young league, ABA, American Basketball Association, was a young lady back in the early, in the early 71 when Joe came, jump leagues came over. During this time, Joe would become the vice president of the ABA Players Association, an organization that would assist players get the rates and rights they deserved. This was new to the world of professional sports, and some would say it paved the way for how these deals operate today. People may not know you uh, just as a basketball player, but they know you as a basketball player and a leader, a politician, something that changed boundaries for everybody else to look into. Throughout the 1970s, the ABA had gained a reputation for bad business decisions, spawning a sports labor war and a slew of lawsuits that would go on for the next 40 years. Despite the fact that the ABA wasn't gaining the audience to beat the NBA, the fans were sad to see it go when the two merged in 1976. Although Joe Caldwell's playing career would end in 1975, his 11 professional seasons between the ABA and the NBA resulted in a combined total of over 12,000 points, becoming a two-time All-Star in the NBA and two-time All-Star in the ABA, and was known as one of the first players with an innovative style. He was a great defensive player. People don't realize, I mean, they think of him as an offensive player, but he was a great defensive player. He was always the best player, but always brought everybody else up to his level. Unbelievable. Joe Caldwell still lives in Arizona, 
is a charter member of the Arizona State Hall of Fame since 1975. He was inducted into the Pac-10 Hall of Fame in 2010 and has continued to share his trials and tribulations with future generations. Joe's the kind of guy that will has continued through his life to help people. His legacy continues throughout his two grandsons, Marvin Bagley III, playing with the Sacramento Kings, and Marcus Bagley, who is currently on the Arizona State University basketball team, where Joe's retired jersey hangs in the rafters. He has not changed. He is still the most dedicated, loyal friend that you could have. And Joe puts smiles on people's faces. He's done it all his life. He's done it on the basketball court, but he does it in life. When he, when he meets you, when he's around you, he makes you smile. Joe, we've come a long way. God has blessed us in so many ways, and he has blessed you. And I am so happy that you're receiving this honor because you deserve it as well as anybody could ever deserve it. Congratulations, Joe Caldwell. Uh, you exemplify uh, what the Hall of Fame inductee should be. Character, integrity, professionalism, and always giving it back to the game. You've never cheated the game. You've always been a positive example to young players on and off the court. And I am proud to be your friend for over 50 plus years and ex teammate. Congratulations, my friend. You know, Joe, going into the Arizona Sports Hall of Fame is a major, major achievement. Pogo Joe, jumping Joe Caldwell, well deserved to be in the Arizona Sports Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Joe. Well deserved to you and your family and keep it rolling. Jumping Joe Caldwell is a pillar of professional basketball history and has earned himself a place in the Arizona Sports Hall of Fame. Joe, when are you going to sign my NBA card from a single spirit? Please. <laughs>